Hi guys and welcome. I am Enigmius and today we are resuming the Nether Crawler build. Obviously we're in the overworld, which means we've got some sort of testing to do, and that's that's what we've got in mind for at least the first part here. I to be completely honest with you, as far as the nether crawler goes, I'm at a minor, a very minor design impasse. I've got some decisions to make. And so we're going to do a little bit of testing here today to help, uh, you know, demonstrate why we made certain decisions that we've made. And then I've got to kind of work a few things out. And I'll show you the Nether Crawler. I've done a, done a little bit of work on it since the last episode, just trying to get some things sorted out. But let's get on with the testing. First of all, you can see, obviously, again, we're in the overworld. There's the weapons testing facility off in the distance. And there's a wall over there with some stuff on it. And that's the first place that we're going to... Uh, Go check out. We'll make sure we've got our jetpack going here. And we'll just kind of hop over all this stuff. Crunching as we go. Fortunately, it's daytime. This is my friend Bob. He's been out here kind of keeping an eye on things for me. Making sure that the crawlers don't destroy this in my absence. Not like they could, but knowing crawlers, they would try. Now, I'll go in close here and I'll show you exactly uh, what I've got here. These are frames. All four of these are frames. You can probably tell by the wooden outline. Um, these two here have obsidian panels on them. Specifically, this one has obsidian panels. And this one has obsidian covers. If you didn't know, you can actually tell things with panels on them, frames with panels on them specifically, will usually have these little corner brackets and um, the ones with covers will not. They just have the wooden frame. So that's a quick way to tell the difference between something with a panel and something with a cover. And then over here we've got my very standard habitual basalt cobblestone panels and covers. And what we're doing here is we're testing the explosion resistance of these particular materials. Now I did some testing on the sled in the underwater hangar and determined that you can move with obsidian panels and covers on frames if i were to take and put just a plain obsidian block on a frame structure it would not move at all but they do work with the panels and covers so that's i already did that test i know that that'll work um, so we just want to kind of take a look and see how they respond to explosions because in the nether obviously uh, ghasts are a concern and also we're talking about using TNT with this vehicle so having a little bit of explosion resistance there um, would also be some sort of a benefit now. The easiest way for me to do this is actually to test it with the mining laser set on explosive. It's a little bit easier than setting up TNT charges. Um, so we're just basically aiming for a direct hit on each of these four blocks to see how they respond. And immediately, we've got a problem. That one's not even there to shoot at anymore. And of course, that one basically vaporizes almost instantly. So now let's try and shoot in behind, off to the side a little bit. Try and hit corners, edges, anything. Let's just wind up and flatten the bugger that's worse than any ghast is likely to do to us so um, the good news is the obsidian survived the cobblestone did not at all it basically evaporated on contact um, I don't really know the mechanics I don't know the mathematics behind how explosion resistance is calculated for panels and covers i just know that obsidian is the one that lived so i hadn't really planned on making a purple nether crawler but around those areas that are potentially prone to find themselves face to face with an explosion we know we've at least got one option um, to protect the vehicle because the last thing you want is to be flying over an ocean of lava of some sort and you know a gas fireball comes along or for whatever reason a TNT deployer misfires and now you've got a gaping hole in the hull of the vehicle and all of the materials that once comprised that part of the hull have fallen into lava. Let's grab this egg because why not? Now the other test that we want to do is up here. Now this is a TNT launcher. Um, I don't know if you've ever seen one of these. I will assume that you have not. So I also have to assume that many of you have. So I'll go over this very, very quickly. Right here, I've got three 
Um, TNT launchers. I'm just going to get this off my hotbar because I have a tendency to right click and blow things up unintentionally. These three deployers will have TNT in them. And when they receive a redstone signal, they drop the TNT into this trough filled with water. And the water is absolutely critical. Um, the fuse on the TNT is ignited by the redstone signal coming along this wire. And then we have also got this deployer here that drops a block of TNT in this area. And its fuse is ignited by this redstone wire. And the idea is that this gets ignited just before these ones go off. And that way these ones propel this block over here and then it goes off something. Now you can see by the crater, I've already done some testing, but I mean, I can talk about it all day. For something like this, uh, it's actually a hell of a lot more fun to just do it, just test it. So I'm going to put a charge in here, a charge in each of these guys. And then we come over here. Now, I'll just show you briefly. This is a repeater, but this is the red power repeater. It's got eight different settings on it. And with this, I can set it up so that it creates enough of a delay that the TNT block will be ignited. The fuse will be ignited on the, the projectile just before the uh, um, projectile charges, I guess, go off. So I can use one redstone pulse to do all of the work. And let's take a look and see what that looks like. You can see those three are lit. Boom, they go off. Just before they went off, that guy was lit and he explodes. So, I mean, that's pretty decent range for a three projectile charge. Now, it's because it's fun, let's just... Oh, I didn't want to do that. Let's uh, do this one more time. It's quick and easy. When you've got it set up with a one-button situation, it's... I mean... Who doesn't like launching TNT? It's one of those things. So, again, drops three. Those are the fuses lit. Just before that guy gets launched, his fuse is lit. And boom. So, the thing is, I don't really, like I say, I don't understand how the water affects the mechanics. I know that if you don't have the water here, these three charges basically just function like normal dynamite. They'll blow up whatever happens to be in the area. I lost about a dozen deployers messing around with different iterations, trying to get something to work that might function in the nether. Needless to say, I failed horribly. Now, what, is it, what does this got to do with the nether crawler? If we can't use it in the nether... Why are we even bothering with it? Well, we can still make use of a TNT deployer system. We just can't launch it. And I mean, we're going to be flying. We're able to be mobile. So it's not necessary for us to be able to launch the TNT in order to be able to get good use of it. Now, I'm going to steal some of these um, cables, the jacketed cables, wires, whatever you want to call them. And I'll just show you the configuration that we'll end up using in the nether um, once we get to that point. Uh, it's nighttime, so I'll just get these gathered up before the crawlers come looking for me. So, um, I've also learned my lesson. This is much, much easier to uh, break apart when we're using the laser as opposed to trying to do it with a drill. So I'm just going to change the setting. Mining might be enough. Let's see. Nope. We need long range. There we go. So this guy's got to get out of the way. That's got to get out of the way. We want to get those out of the way. And this time, we will just block off the water because, you know, having the launcher over here will be fun. Um, but I don't want to have to go and get more buckets of water. I'm kind of lazy that way, I think. Uh, so... I'm going to get my jetpack ready again. I'm just going to grab these last two guys here. Now the goal here, obviously, with a deployer is we want, first of all, we want the TNT, obviously, to come out of the deployer. We want the fuse to be lit, and we want it to fall. We want it to fall away from the structure, away from the vehicle. Uh, the last thing that we want, obviously, is for the fuse to be lit and the TNT block to stay in place because that's how stuff gets blown up that we didn't want to have blown up. So you can see the way I've got it set up is that when it comes out, there are currently no blocks that will be directly adjacent to a face on the TNT that might make it stick. And that I found seems to be a little bit important um, based on the earlier testing that I did. But what we do need to have is one of these cables 
actually sticking down one block below the level of the deployer. And I think that might actually be one block too far. Actually, no, we'll try it like that. And if it's wrong, the TNT will stick and things will blow up and that's fine because we've got extras. So we're just going to run this back. So now this is going to be receiving its charge from the same signal again that causes the TNT to be deployed by the deployer. Um, but there won't be any kind of delay. It's bypassing the delay. So the charges, the redstone signals will be coming at the same time. And if this is going to work, the best way to find out is to put this guy in here. We'll just put one in case it doesn't work properly and it ends up blowing up. Then we come over here, we push our button. And there we have it. A TNT deployer. You can see we've got a bunch of sand. I'll try and uh, get up there a little bit quicker. We'll put another charge in there. I'll try and get up there a little bit quicker so that we can get a slightly better look at it. And button. Yeah, so it's, we'll do one more because we are obviously not just demonstrating it, but we're actually testing it. Um, I have had misfires on things like this, even when it seemed like it should work. So, down it goes, and oh, oh, there's a skelly down there. How did that feel, skelly? Was that good? Yeah, he's doesn't appear to be too happy. So that's that's basically the uh, the idea behind the TNT deployers that will be on the Nether crawler. But obviously they'll be more compact. We don't need a whole barrel system like that. We just need basically the deployer, the redstone wire that's going to ignite the charge, and a wire that tells the deployer to deploy TNT. Potentially as well tubes to load and reload the deployers would be nice but we'll kind of work that out as we get closer to that point so that's the tnt deployer we know we can get some blast resistant materials on the hull so let's head into the nether and take a look at the nether crawler and see what i've done on it up to this point so here we are in the nether obviously and we can see it's got that screen flash kind of glitch going on there apparently that's related to thunderstorms in the overworld so that's why I actually built the hangar with no windows even though it looks like it's open at the end that's just because the uh, the chunks aren't all loaded we'll just kind of pause the game so that the chunks load a little bit quicker you can see it's still flashing I guess down at the end there we're not still properly loaded so the idea of not having windows was to try and cut down on distractions from that kind of thing so hopefully it decides to stop flashing down there soon. Anyways, um, this is obviously the nether crawler. It's getting bigger. It's been eating a lot. It's, uh, I'm gonna, again, just like the mining laser, I don't want to be walking around carrying TNT. That's just a recipe for disaster. So what I'm trying to do is get um, a spot in place where I can run all of the cables. I know that I'll need to have ribbon cable. This is the ribbon cable that connects all the different red power computer components together. Um, I need to have this running from the front to the back so that I can have a monitor back here and be able to have like a little pod in the back where I can look out and you know if I need to reverse the vehicle be able to see where I'm going so I need the ribbon cable I need the bundled cable because it's not just controlling the motors it's also going to be controlling the TNT deployers and my goal right now is to have a total of eight TNT deployers four on either side starting probably with the first one around here and then like every few blocks have another one and then so the fourth one will be sort of on the wall near the power plant so that's part of the reason why it's important to have explosion resistant materials on the hull is because we don't want to be blowing up the uh, MFSU or the force field core or anything of that nature so that's kind of what I'm trying to figure out is how I want this all to you know fit together now this is one sort of example for how I want it to go and I've already figured out I need to move those cables even if I did stick with that plan and then we would drop the existing chassis. That's where we have all our blue electric batteries, um, the tubes that will feed the char you know, rechargeable batteries into the blue electric batteries. This is the drive motor core. So we would drop this whole upper part of the chassis down onto this area here. 
and then we'd have the undercarriage with a nice little compartment to run all the cables but I'm kind of trying to figure out now if we couldn't do it a little bit better and I'm almost thinking at this point that I wouldn't mind so much having to walk across cables to get to the back areas of the ship if it meant that we could keep the form factor a little bit smaller because this thing is turning into quite the behemoth for a simple ex exploration vehicle. Now one of the other things that I added and I intend to keep this as a design feature because it's aesthetic as much as functional are these baffles on the side and it's really hard to see them with just the frames but if I fly up there you can see along what used to be the exterior of the vessel there's now sort of a walkway. I can get down to where I've currently got the switch controlling the uh, the drive motors um, back here also um, you know, if I needed to change some wiring around or I wanted to take a look at things, I've got access that way. Uh, the other side, it has the same sort of setup in terms of the way the baffle comes across and can be used as a entrance or an exit. It just doesn't really have any access points right now. It's mostly just cut off, even though I can get to a little bit of wiring there. So this is what I was talking about also, about having an explosion resistant point on the outer part of the vehicle for the entrance and exits because that's where you're likely to encounter the gas fireballs. Once this thing is done and out in the open, when I'm in the vehicle itself, there's, I mean, gas aren't going to be shooting fireballs because they can't see. Even when we start getting into the transparent frames and all of those other things, even though I can see out, the gas won't be able to see in. They're not going to be lobbing fireballs at me when I'm inside the vehicle, but when I exit the vehicle, the last thing that I would want is to be right about, say, for example, here, when a gas blasts a fireball on me because I just came into view and then that sort of chunk of the vehicle ends up destroyed. So we'll probably end up using some obsidian around these areas where the baffles are just to provide that element of explosion resistance and then we'll still have the opportunity to go a little bit more aesthetic with the coloring and the details um, in other areas of the vessel. Obviously around the TNT deployers we're also going to want the obsidian um, because like I say, if you have a misfire, if something lags or glitches or something like that and you end up with TNT um, with a lit fuse that doesn't fall, you definitely want to make sure you're protected against that. So that's kind of what I'm working on now is first of all exactly how I want to lay out the wiring and also whether or not I want to go with this model and just kind of lay out the wiring here and then lower the the superstructure down onto it or if I just want to kind of redo it because I know if I start digging into the upper part of the chassis right now um, it's gonna turn into a big big job like I'm gonna get it done and I'll think it's done until I go to fire it up and move it around and then I'll find out that something's not connected to the frames and blah 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 that's usually how it goes with these I'm just not sure that I want to put myself in that position. So before the next episode, I'll have that sorted out. Um, the next episode, what I want to have is the TNT deployers, at least the first six in place. And I want to have the um, MFSU, the force field core, the charging bench, all that spotted in place so that all we'll have left to do is the cockpit, the front boring equipment, which will be pretty much a full episode on its own, and all of the wiring and stuff like that. So we're probably looking at two to four episodes still quite easily before this guy is ready to make its way outside the hangar, but we're getting there. And uh, like I say, I just wanted to show you today some of the, the design concepts that are going on, some of the reasons why I'm making some of the decisions, and to bring you up to speed with where we're at in terms of the general construction itself. And hopefully in the next episode, like I say, it'll get a little bit more interesting as we start incorporating these design components into the finished product. So by all means, guys, if you have any comments or suggestions, leave them in the comments section below the video. And if you're enjoying this series and want to be notified when the next video gets posted, the easiest way to do that is to make sure you subscribe to my channel. So until the next episode, thanks for watching and take care.